In today's conversation, we discuss three keys to cultivating a magnetic personality. Personal magnetism refers to the quality which results in what we call attractiveness, influential, charismatic, confidence, and fluidity of mind in relation to others. Now, personal magnetism is the result of your mental attitudes as well as your predominant mental state. Your mental state and mental attitude towards yourself, others, environment, circumstances, and information. Your mental attitudes and mental state manifest as what you say, don't say, do, don't do, and includes subcommunication, such as body language, facial expressions, micro-expressions, voice tonality, which is part of paralinguistics, degree of comfort when in proximity to others, and comfort of touch, etc., as well as some unseen factors, which I'd like to discuss today. Mental states and mental attitudes consist of beliefs, core beliefs and specific beliefs that manifest as thinking patterns, emotional relatability, ease or lack thereof to regulate emotions, and physical manifestation. All of these manifestations mentioned thus far reveal the degree of personal magnetism. Now, if you desire to embody personal magnetism, consider the following. There's a lot of information that discusses what to say, what not to say, what to do, or what not to do. What I'd like to focus on today are the ideal mental attitudes as well as the ideal mental state which naturally arise as what to do, what not to do, what to say, and what not to say, all natural expressions of authentic communication and harmonious relationship arising naturally from ideal mental attitudes and an ideal mental state to play out accordingly. And this is enormously powerful, so let's discuss this further. See, I believe in valuing what to do or not do to convey a message effectively. Yet, I like to focus more on your individual, authentic, ideal acts that manifest automatically from your ideal mental attitudes and mental state rather than forcing behaviors or physical acts to try and convey personal magnetism based on various information that is not authentic to you. And one of the reasons why is I've studied NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, since 2001, 23 years now. And by that I mean not just theory, but application in my own life personal, family, business life, and working with thousands of others in this area, one-on-one, -on -one, groups, large audiences, online and offline, incorporating some NLP and other communication modalities. Communication, I would say, is my healthy obsession. And I've not seen an end to the study, as there's so much nuances to it. Now, a lot of NLP knowledge and communication knowledge derives from what we call modeling. Modeling of successful patterns or behaviors of another in a way that can be replicated. For example, Richard Bandler and John Grinder, who founded NLP in the 1970s, have dedicated a lot of attention to observing and analyzing communication and behavioral patterns of successful individuals, including therapists, to take what is found to be effective by tracking it back to the beliefs a person is identified with, core and specific beliefs. Then, these beliefs through NLP can be transferred to another person so they can automatically behave that way. This is often done through language patterns, during consulting or therapy, and we discussed this recently. I'll link in the description to some examples. So we know that beliefs identified with play out automatically as theater with others, whether they be considered attractive or not. And there is one universal power within, I am, that takes what you believe and externalizes it for you as the theater with others. It's all beliefs playing out, whether one is aware of them or not. And as mentioned, much information on communication focuses on what can be physically tracked and measured, which is helpful. Logical conclusions are drawn that beliefs manifest as verbal and nonverbal communication, and this is obviously true. Yet there's more to this infinitely intelligent power 
of the I am within you, then we know that is beyond current five sensory understanding of how beliefs play out as theater. See, I believe it's unreasonable to assume that what is known through the five senses is all that exists. I believe the power within is infinitely more unknown than we currently know of. And no shame or condemnation there, we're always learning. And these unknown aspects may be made known through personal experience. If one only keeps an open mind and thinks for themselves, like for example, thought transmission and telepathy, as we have explored already to a great degree in our Neville Goddard discussions. So why am I bringing this up and how does this relate to personal magnetism? Well, I get asked the following question a lot or something similar. What do I say to someone if I want to meet someone? If I see someone I'm interested in, for example, and I want to meet them, what do I say to them? And will they like me if I say that to them? And this is a fair question, so let's explore it. See, when I met my girlfriend, one could say she visibly rejected me three times. I walked up to her and started a conversation. And within a few minutes, I asked if she was interested in going for a coffee with me. And she said she wasn't interested. Then we talked about something else. And then I asked her again. And again, she said she wasn't interested. Then I talked about something else. And then again, I asked her in which she again said she wasn't interested. So I said, here, check out this video that I released talking about this or that. I can't remember. And I said, if you like, we can talk about it more. And she said, yes. And shortly after, she met up with me for coffee, which was our first date. And we eventually ended up in a relationship. So if someone says exactly what I said, would it play out ideally for them? Well, the answer is it depends. As there were some things that I said that I wouldn't tell people to say because if the mental state or mental attitude was not ideal and maintained with congruence, it would not manifest as a desired result, to say the least. And why is this the case? Well, because personal magnetism is a manifestation of mental states and mental attitudes. Thus, what we say, don't say, do, or don't do happens naturally, harmoniously, and authentically in a mutually beneficial way in correspondence with the mental state, which is made up of beliefs towards yourself, others, environment, circumstance, and information. And... The amplification of personal magnetism is the result of remaining abiding in that personal magnetism-based state and not wavering into undesirable states. This purifies and transforms the mind and also transforms the body, which manifests as the visible signs of personal magnetism. And it amplifies the invisible effects of the mental state, thus it not only manifests as ideal, verbal, and nonverbal, it also increases the amplitude of them. Now, William Walker Atkinson wrote about an invisible effect really well in his book, Practical Mental Influence, which I'd like to weave into our conversation today and further explore in the year ahead deeply. So we won't cover everything, he said, but over the course, we'll increase our coverage. Today, I'd like to discuss the thought waves chapter, and then provide a step-by-step -step practical way to embody personal magnetism while considering this chapter, including my research of working with others since 2013, and even going back before that. It's just that in 2013 was when I started receiving requests to teach it, so I offered the service. He says, when a thought or feeling is generated in the mind of a person, the energy generated flows forth from the person in the form of waves of mental energy spreading from the immediate neighborhood of the thinker to a distance proportioned to the strength of the thought or feeling. So this is key. If one's mental attitude is one where they believe they are a harmonious match with another, then the thought waves bring them about. They draw those who mirror those thought waves. And she verified this as well. She said, 
I knew we were going to go out. I felt it. So even though she verbally said that she wasn't interested three times, and this is key, she was not uncomfortable, nor was there any pressure or neediness. She was laughing the whole time. It's all theater that reflects the state. So we enjoyed the theater. It's like a dance. A theater of perhaps, are you bold like that? Are you for real? What if I say I'm not interested? Are you going to remain like that? Are you authentic? So consider this. All of this is a manifestation of the mental state. It's very powerful. Yet if one does not understand and apply this with naturalness, it will be a totally different response. So much is happening behind the scenes. We trust the unseen, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Remember, we are the only ones consciously or subconsciously giving meaning to what appears and upon identification to that meaning. We can either remain in our ideal state or change our state, which then the interaction appears to change as we play out a different energy, as he says here. These thought waves have the property of awakening similar vibrations in the mind of other persons coming within their field of power according to the laws of mental influence. Thought waves are manifested in a variety of forms and phases. Some are the waves emanated from the minds of thinkers unconsciously and without purpose, and usually without much power. Others are sent forth with great power and travel far, manifesting a degree of influence commensurate with the power with which they are projected. Now, this is key. When you abide in an ideal state of mind, which we can call a magnetic personality state, people seem to appear out of nowhere to match you. And as you continue abiding in this state, the frequency of them appearing increases. And I've spoken to many who had also reported this as well. When one is abiding in a state of mind not akin to personal magnetism, there could appear to be a shortage of matches for dates, friendships, business relationships, etc. Yet in a magnetic state, the matches show up anywhere. They seem to sit beside you on the airplane, transfer to your class, happen to be at places that you go, message you on social media, etc. And as you remain abiding in that state, it increases in frequency. They appear in unexpected places in an increasing quantity on a continuous basis. He also says this about thought waves. He says, you will readily understand that there is a great difference between thought waves sent forth idly and unconsciously and without knowledge of the underlying laws of mental influence and those projected with a full knowledge of the laws governing the phenomena and urged on and directed by a powerful will of the sender. The power is the same, but the degree of its power and the measure of its effects are determined by the conditions of its sending force. The vibratory force of these thought waves does not cease with the sending forth of the wave, but persists for a long time afterward just as heat in a room persists long after the fire in the stove has been extinguished, just as the perfume of the flower exists in the room long after the flower has been removed, just as an X-ray of light travels through space for millions of miles and for centuries after the star itself has been blotted out of existence, just as any and all forms of vibratory energy persist in manifesting after the initial impulse has been withdrawn. So there's so much to discuss from this book, even this chapter. Let's make what we've discussed thus far practical for personal magnetism. So here's what I did and what I've worked with others to do with phenomenal results. Number one, note down any beliefs related to fears, doubts, or uncertainty in relation to meeting new people, and turn the tracks on that former self-talk related to those beliefs by turning them around into ideal 
auto-suggestions and playing them in loop before you fall asleep till the change has been initiated and you experience reality in the likeness of those auto-suggestions. Then you can acknowledge the changes that appear often until they become your natural way of being. For example, if one believes that people that they desire are not interested in them, they can say more so each day everywhere I am, I acknowledge that it's easier to talk to those that I find interesting. Upon reflection, I realize it's now easier and easier. This releases identification to the belief that is not true. Number two, when you do meet people, after you interact with them, note down any beliefs related to fear, doubts, or uncertainty in relation to meeting with them that may have been triggered and do the same thing as number one. Number three, repeat number one and number two often. The repetition of doing one and two purifies the mind and personal magnetism arises as you continue to dwell in that state. Then you will know what to say, not to say, do or don't do. And if you learn from all the information available today, you can discern and apply what is authentic to you. And the thought waves, as William Walker Atkinson described, will continue to amplify in power, and you'll meet more and more people in interesting and at times unexpected ways in increasing quantity on a continuous basis. The key is to remain in the state and not waver into undesirable states. Allow the power within to multiply the effects of the state by not identifying with beliefs that are the antithesis of personal magnetism. So, I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I am aware of what I think and feel when I'm communicating with others, and I'm able to adjust accordingly to what I know myself to be ideally. This transforms how I relate to others and how they relate to me effortlessly, revealing authentic personal magnetism as others appear in increasing quantity on a continuous basis to relate harmoniously in a mutually beneficial way. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.